Welcome to Message of Faith, the Bible teaching ministry of yours truly, Bill Robertson. In 2 Timothy 2.15 we read, Study to show thyself proved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And in Romans 10 verse 8 we read, The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. Please sit back with Bible and pen in hand and let's get started with today's study, always ensuring to rightly divide the word of truth. It is only then we are able to go forth and teach the message of faith. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone to Message of Faith. And today's topic is going to be part one of God is in Control. And by the way, I wanted to make sure uh, everyone knows that I love my wife. I love her very much. I'd like to go over Job chapter 12, verses 9 through 10. It says this, Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? in whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. In this world we live in, what is currently going on in not only the United States, but the world, the crisis of the virus that's going around and all of the protests, all of the evil and just the the savagery that we see on the news. We just need to know and understand that God is in control. He is not surprised by any of this. In His hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. Even the very breath that we breathe is in His hand. Psalm 24 verse 1 the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. God is in control of this earth. Satan is not in control of this world. God is in control. He only allows Satan to do this and that. But in the long run, the Lord's judgment will be made known and it will be true and we will be justified in the end, those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and follow his teachings. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I love that question the Lord poses there. Is there anything too hard for me? He is the Father God, the God who created the world. He spoke it into existence. He created it from nothing. Nothing is too hard for our God. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The Lord is upholding us with his strength, his right hand. He will not let us fall from his fingers. We know that all things are going to come together in the end, for all things work together for good to those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. In Psalm 5, 11, verse 12, we read, But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you, let them ever shout for joy, because you cover and protect them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him or encompass him as with a shield. I love how the King James puts, compass him as a shield. You know, a, a compass, the modern day compass, they, they have 360 points that completely surround an area 
I mean, it's it's almost like a like a dial on, on a clock. Completely surrounding, completely engulfing, encompassing you. Now, a compass has 360 points, but when God encompasses us, there is an infinite amount of points that totally surrounds us, like a complete circle. He encompasses us as a shield. In Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7, be careful or be anxious is what that means. Do not be anxious for anything. Be careful or be worried for nothing is what it's, what it's telling us. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He will keep your hearts and mind. He will safeguard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. In Psalm 28, verse 6, Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. We can know that he hears our supplications, our dire, heartfelt, needful prayers, done so in repentance, with brokenness in spirit. That is the only way. We can't be prideful in telling God what to do. No, we need to bow with a repentful and with a brokenness in, in our heart. Coming to God only in that fashion. That is no other way that He will hear our prayers. In Psalm 94, verse 19, this is something that we can all identify with. When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your consolations delight my soul. The consolations of God are His Word, His promises. Pick up the Bible. Just start reading the book of Psalms for an example. You'll see amazing promises and you'll be given so much relief and you'll be given so much comfort in the reading of those promises. Psalm 55 verse 22 Cast thy burden upon the Lord. He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer or allow the righteous to be moved. The Lord is on our side. His death on the cross, death, burial, resurrection, the blood He shed for us, He will never allow the righteous to be moved. We are bought with a price. This isn't any flippant thing that the Lord did for us. There is no easy answers, no easy believism, nothing that is like a simplistic lifestyle where we can just just come to God in a way that we think that we that we are to behave or the way that we are to act as if it were anything that we do on our own no nothing that we can do on our own he did it all for us In Psalm 37, 39 through 40, it talks about the salvation of the righteous. Now, this salvation is not as in being saved, like in John 3, 3 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then it goes on, it says, He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And then the verse 18 of that chapter says that for God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but so that the world might be saved. Now that word saved 
is not the same in this passage, Psalm 37, verse 39. This is the salvation as of like being protected or being, as I spoke earlier about, being compassed about with favor as a shield. Psalm 37, 39 to 40, but the salvation or the protection of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. I'd like to close this topic of God is in control. This is out of Exodus chapter 14. In verse 13, up to this point, this is when the children of Israel are with Moses and they just left Egypt. They had been in slavery and bondage. And now they're being cornered at the Red Sea. And all of Pharaoh's troops on chariots are coming after them. And they're being cornered and all of the Israelites, they're complaining and scared and fearful. And they wish that they could have just stayed in Egypt to not have to go through this. Now listen to what verse 13 says. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. In this time period that we are living in right now, I am certain that many of you feel like you are cornered, just like the children of Israel were at that time, being cornered right on the edge of the Red Sea. The Egyptian army coming after them, feeling like you have nowhere to go and no hope. Listen again to the admonition of the Lord, what Moses said. Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. See the protection of the Lord, see the provision of the Lord. Again, in Jeremiah it says, the Lord said, is there anything too hard for me? And that simple answer, the obvious answer is no, it is not. Well, I wanna thank everyone for joining in today in this short devotion time with the first part of God is in control. And remember, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We'll see you next time.